and welcome to ECCB Connects. This week we'll be speaking about e-money and to do this I have with me Alex Strawn, financial technology developer. Alex, welcome to ECCB Connects. Hi, thank you. Alex, the way we conduct business and the way we pay for goods and services that has been changing over the past few years. We're now moving into credit card, debit card, online shopping, into the realm of what we call e-money. When we speak about e-money, exactly what we're dealing with here? Thank you, excellent question. The concept of e-money refers to any digitization or virtualization of existing currency stored, on a ma stored magnetically or on a central computer or device. In a nutshell, that covers e-money. It is typically backed, uh, backed or denominated in the currency of the country. So it doesn't necessarily cover cryptocurrency. However, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency or digital currency. Mm -hmm. Now, recent trends have been where because of the characteristics of digital currency and how pervasive and functional it is, where e-money definitions have widened mm -hmm. to include digital currency. However, legally, legally, and so we are having a, a slight divide between what is technically e-money and what is legally e-money. We have had digital currencies and, um, such as Bitcoin and so are not deemed in the strictest sense e-money. So for example, if you take the European Union, the legislation in the European Union necessitates that any currency, any e-money is backed by an issuer because say Bitcoin is not owned or issued by any in entity per se, mm -hmm. then it cannot qualify in that legal sense as e-money. So too recently, uh, I think uh, about July last year, a court in Florida would have ruled that Bitcoin did not qualify in the strictest sense as money because of the fact that one, it, rep it, it acted more as an asset and people could do as they like uh, with, with an asset in terms of they could buy it, they could sell it, they could do whatever they want, mm -hmm. but it wasn't in its sense an ex a, a, a medium of exchange in that legal sense. It's not being backed, not fiat, not necessarily denoted um, in the currency of the country. Okay, so give some examples of e-money. In the simplest form, you, one would be surprised that e-money is, how pervasive e-money is today. For example, the very debit cards that you, you're using is, a represent, is accessing money stored centrally mm -hmm. on your bank account. Okay. And that is, is fundamentally um, e-money. Mm -hmm. Let's look at, say, New York, where you typically go to the subway system, the transit system, where you could take um, your cash, mm -hmm. purchase a stored value card for accessing the transit, mm -hmm. the transit system, mm -hmm. that's e-money. So any stored value, any, mo any sort of forms where you're accessing a digitization of the local currency, etc., is e-money. So debit card, credit card. Online banking. Online banking. Online shopping, when you do your online shopping. Well, sense. online shopping, yes. Um, mm -hmm in that you're doing e-transactions. Mm -hmm. You refer to those as e-transactions because you're not physically present mm -hmm. and you're not physically exchanging uh, money. Mm -hmm. um, and I hesitated a bit because technically you're doing a credit transaction and you're not necessarily accessing, oh. accessing a stored value. However, you, uh, w technically one could argue, yes, that credit cards do fit within that realm mm -hmm. because what is happening, the issuing entity is providing you a line of credit and in, at the instance that you draw down on, uh, um, or make use of your credit card, they are actually issuing electronic money. Mm -hmm. Alex, you mentioned earlier two, two terms, um, Bitcoin and digital currency. Explain first digital currency. Well, digital currencies and in my definition of e-money, I, I, I sort of segued in saying that 
re recent definitions of e-money have sought to broaden to include digital currency. What makes digital currency especially, and Bitcoin is an example of a digital currency, mm -hmm. and you might sometimes hear the term cryptocurrency. And the reason why you, the term cryptocurrency is used is that the currency is based on a certain element of cryptograph, cryptography. Sorry. So how it works is that there's a, a finite amount of, of, of currency that could be in circulation, not necessarily backed. And the computers are decentralized. They call them nodes. And these nodes were used to mine the bitcoins. And they were, those bitcoins in coming into circulation were more or less verified holistically by all the computers. Now, it may sound complicated. It does. And so I, 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 what I'm trying to do here is to make it, ve to oversimplify it. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, we are accustomed to what we have money mm -hmm. being managed from a central computer. Mm -hmm. What digital currency does or, or, or is that it is not managed from a central computer anymore. It is that instead of the ledger being at this particular computer where you, you keep a track of who owns what, mm -hmm. Everyone in the network, whether it's a private or public network, has a copy of the ledger. Mm -hmm. So everyone can see and verify whether it's using cryptograph, uh, cryptography or any other sort of keys, what each person has and whether a transaction is legitimate. Now, depending on how that transaction is, is moved from person to person, the information is replicated across to everyone. Mm -hmm. but the interactions between the computers validate that the transaction is authentic. No, this has implications in terms of speed. So instead of one person having to communicate and say, yes, this transaction is actually legitimate, mm -hmm. all computers simultaneously could say, having once it validates and it's passed, adds a particular element verifying that the transaction is 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 accurate and that's why they call it blockchain because once a transaction is validated it is added to the previous characteristics of the transaction and that new block now creates a whole new identity that all the ledgers are then updated with this information sounds complicated but it is based on the fact that instead of one centrally controlled mm -hmm. system you're having multiple systems validating every transaction and replicating. It has efficiency for safety because if one server goes down, the information is still uh, available. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that all computers have to act together to validate the transaction and the ledger has to be replicated in all of those places simultaneously, it requires it's tremendous computing power and makes it almost impossible for anybody to hack and corrupt mm -hmm. the data. So that has been the whole underlying technology for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is just the biggest, the original mm -hmm. um, use of this blockchain technology. And so technically would have been the one who would have suffered the most in terms of press and glory as it relates to this particular currency. But there are other currencies that are digital currencies that use a similar blockchain, mm -hmm. but what makes them different is the cryptography that they will use in terms of validating and limiting the supply of those currencies. Okay. How, how pervasive or prevalent is this use of e-money in our region? In our region, it is predominantly used for consumer to business. So before, uh, and uh, I, I make the, within the, the, the ECCU especially, payments are still the, um, predominantly by checks and cash. Some 80% of transactions are done that way. However, you have seen the debit cards and credit cards, more transactions being done in terms of business, paying for your bills online, uh, s swiping, but there are a lot of places who don't accept cards. Mm -hmm. And that might be because of infrastructural impediments, that might be because of co costs. It is not as pervasive because you would recognize, because of the very setup of card, it is limited to the application of people to business. Mm -hmm. 
if you needed to pay me a hundred dollars right now, it is difficult for you to take out your card mm -hmm. and say, here's my yeah. card. Because you need to have that device. Because I need to have so a device, but not only a device, I need to be set up specifically mm -hmm. as a business. Ah. Not just as another user in the system, and in order to because her cards are established on the premise of that here's a consumer doing business with an entity. So if I'm not an entity and have some sort of legal claim for you to do business with me, then typically cards would then get that. Uh, we have that impasse where you can't do transactions with me. Okay, you mentioned about infrastructure being important to to take this concept forward. What sort of in infrastructure needs to be in place for the use of e-money to advance in our region? Well, typically e-money falls into specific characteristics or group. I think it was way back in the 90s with the advent of Mondex, where you would have had devices that stored value that interacted with each other and value was then transferred from one to the other. That sort of, that sort of grouping you call those offline, mm -hmm. stored value, and the device in itself, they, they, they are programmed to speak to each other. At some point in time when you tap into a server, then the information is reconciled with the server centrally. But you could see a device such as that not needing much except battery power and the ability to speak to each other. Then you have another group of e-money devices that really need that central computer, that set, central set of computing. Mm -hmm. Digital currency falls within this realm because with digital currency, it is important for a number of servers to be talking to each other mm -hmm. and to actually validate the transaction. A central computer in the case of like Kenya in terms of M-Pesa and even the credit card system is, it is necessary for whenever you're doing transaction to tap into that central device. Now what is required to do that? It could be just be a matter of telephones, it could be a matter of internet, but you could then picture a situation where if there's any disruption in the phone service or in the internet service, then you can't do e-money transactions. So you have those two. Then you then have the hybrids where you need central storage or central processing and access, but in the absence of any disruptions, you can still do some limited transactions, which are then uploaded to the system afterwards. So that's the sort of infrastructure that is required. No matter what, you need to be able to, whether it's on a delayed basis or not, plug into infrastructure or the devices have to be self-sufficient. Okay. So are these um, infrastructures available in our region or is well, that something difficult? I, I, everyone has internet access right mm -hmm. now and the, the telecommunication companies do provide data services plus there are a number of free Wi-Fi hotspots. So yes, infrastructure is there. The question, uh, and we have, and this is where policy and government policy needs to come to play because it is important if we want to move to that sort of, uh, any sort of reliance on electronic money, it would mean that we need to put a certain value that the infrastructure always being available. Mm -hmm. For instance, I remember a few years ago, we were having frequent power outages. Mm -hmm. And I remember my boss was saying that he couldn't access his vehicle because he got stuck on the lift and there was no power to bring it down. Mm -hmm. and I reflected on this as it relates to the economic implications, how much business could suffer mm -hmm. if you're relying on an infrastructure mm -hmm. and as a result of that infrastructure not being available, transactions can't get done. Yeah. So that's the sort of thinking that policymakers need to bring to bear so that they can require of the infrastructure providers that there is a certain element of re reliance, a reliability, a certain element of reliability mm -hmm. of the infrastructure so that we could put more reliance on doing e-money. Alex, this is very interesting, but we're out of time. So we definitely have to continue this discussion next week. You're watching ECCB Connects. 
protecting our currency, developing our region. And now for this week's financial tip. Start to build intergenerational wealth by passing on solid money management skills to us. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place, at your convenience, check out our YouTube channel, ECCB Connects. We've come to the end of this week's episode of ECCB Connects. Join us again next week when we'll continue our discussion with Alex on e-money. <laughs>